Hi, my name is Komoto Sabakwani. I'm the head of property valuations and analytics at FNB. We're going to touch on a few topics regarding the property market and to be able to assist you to be more informed when going in your property buying journey. So I think first question, how do you identify the best location to buy into and some of the other uh, considerations? When we look at property, it is most likely going to be your largest purchase that you'll ever make in your lifetime. Not only that is, is it just uh, a building or property, it will also most likely turn into something that is going to be a long-term asset that will grow over your life. Um, but before that, the thing about that is a property isn't just the building. This is the place where you're going to spend most of your life outside of your workplace. And really the thing about that is this, it becomes your home. So you then, I think for me, the most important question is, what are your needs? Um, you have to ask yourself questions to say, what are the needs that will best suit me at this point in time? Am I single or how will it accommodate me and my partner? Do we have children? Do we, how many do we envision, envision ourselves to have at a later stage? Because then this will start dictating the types of property that you're looking at. For example, if you guys are parents, you're going to want to start saying what are the type of schools that are available to me as a parent and for my child. Uh, and the other thing about that is you might find that the best types of schools might actually all be a bit further away. Now, from that perspective, you might want to have uh, a property that's closer there. Or the other thing about that is you in this new remote working culture that we're living in, some of us are finding that we have the opportunity to work inside the home more often than not. So from that perspective, you might find that where you choose to be might not be related to how far your child's school is anymore because you're now not concerned about your traffic situation. And some of you might find that traffic is indeed a situation that you want to think about. So these are needs that you have to think about when looking at your property. The, more, the most important thing then really is then what can you afford? And I think that is something that all of us would want to have some type of relief in. So I think the best way for you to do that is to get yourself some type of pre-qualification. So feel free to go onto the F&B app where you can see how much you pre-qualify for by yourself or with you and your partner, and then you'll be best informed and you'll feel confident about where you want to be able to buy. And then if you're a first time home buyer, you can then also look into other considerations. Do you qualify for the FLISP uh, government subsidy? Or if you're an existing homeowner, uh, do you have equity in your existing uh, home? So from that perspective, we can assist you. You can either make use of our app or contact us and we'll make uh, our team of professional valuers available to you so that you know the, the value of your home that the bank would be willing to finance at. And that just makes it a little bit more confident for you when selling your home. So you know that the next buyer will, be e will easily be able to, to get a hold of your property. So what are things to consider when negotiating at the back of selling uh, a property um, and how do you inform yourself in making that purchasing decision so I think the important consideration is to say what is the average price in the market that you're looking at and you can inform yourself uh, by trying to understand how old is the home that you're buying in and what potential defects are sitting there I think we all need to be aware that a home is a living thing it needs maintenance from time to time so if your home is brand new from a developer, you can understand that he will most likely offer some type of warranty to the home. Um, there, you'll have a snag list of things that need to be attended before you move in. But if you're buying an existing property from another home buyer, you need to then look at this property and then understand to say, are there things that I potentially need to fix up in the near future? Do I need to put on another coat of paint? Are there cracks that I need to attend to? Uh, is there electrical work that I need to attend to? These are normal things that happen to a home, but you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're doing too much to the home. Realistically, these are things that you should be able to review uh, by yourself or get an independent person to take a look at it for you to then have a sense that uh, uh, whether this home is actually going to be too much, too much work. And these are the things that will also inform your buying decision to say, do I need to negotiate down seeing that I have all these additional costs or quite frankly, this is too much work for me and I'm willing to go look for another home that that has less that is less onerous for me to, to be able to 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 rebuild. And I think the important thing about that is that you need to also then just make sure that you've 
comfortably look to see what is all the stock available that's listed in the market at the moment because one home may seem wonderful but you might find an equivalent home at a similar price that just has less effort uh, involved so feel free yet again uh, go into the FNB app you'll see we've got quite a list of supplies available property developers who have wonderful stock out there that's available for you to uh, to, to potentially buy So another question that comes up is how to not fall into a purchasing trap around overcapitalized properties. And it sort of slightly touches on the topic that I uh, uh, looked at previously. Want to make sure that you don't have an unnecessary amount of expenses in the home. You'll buy it at one price and then suddenly find that you've got an excessive amount of repairs that you need to do. And even then, in an ideal home that's got uh, no concerns, you have to look at the type of property market that's happening in and around the area that you're looking. Um, so you don't want to be the most expensive street in uh, expensive house on the street. Let me rather put it that way. Um, so in that way, how you want to look at it is to say then, um, at this market range, do I believe that the suburb is going to be improving, staying the same or uh, uh, deteriorating in some way? So from that perspective, you have a sense of whether you're uh, buying way too much. But more importantly, you want to see what are the active selling prices. Um, uh, in the suburb that you're looking at. And yet again, you can look at our app where we have the ability to show you all the actual registered sales that have gone through. So you have an understanding to be informed to say that I may be buying at this price and other homes have been selling at slightly less. And then you need to then understand to say that why is my home, my potential home more expensive than everyone else? Um, is it that the price is too much? So you might find that you're actually overcapitalizing or that this home represents something unique that everyone else doesn't have. It may have gone through some type of renovation cycle. Um, and in that way, you then also need to question, is everyone else slowly renovating? Because you're just sitting at the, the beginning, at the forefront of this wave. Um, and in that case, then at least you have some comfort that you're not buying into too expensive. But if everyone else isn't renovating, then you start needing to ask yourself, do I really want to be the most expensive home in the street? And is everyone else going to catch up to me? Because whether we like it or not, at some point, all of us potentially have to move out of our current homes and you'll struggle to be able to sell your home at the value that you, you bought it at. And another question, what are the benefits of buying in a sectional title versus full title and potentially in an estate? So what is a sectional title? I mean, ultimately, if you think about it in its basic way, it's just a gated community where we all live, uh, live together. I think the benefit of that is that there's some safety uh, aspects in mind, there's peace of mind, there's security controls. If some of your parents, you know that you can leave your children to run around with uh, quite comfortably with all the other children and they won't get out onto the street. And the thing about a sectional title is that you also outsource the maintenance of your gardening and painting and other um, uh, general maintenance around the home. But that comes at a price. You need to pay monthly levies and the like and you also have to obey the body corporate rules. And then when we compare to a full title, that's when we think of the traditional home our grandparents grew up in, a standalone property sitting on a stand by itself. And in that way, there's some more freedoms that you have that you otherwise wouldn't have uh, in a sectional title. You've got the freedom to just knock down a wall, make it a little bit more open plan. Uh, you can add a room and extend your home. You can change the way your garden is. But the, the cost of that is that you have to do your own maintenance. You have to find your own suppliers or you need to wake up on a Saturday morning and then go and mow the lawn. Um, so for that freedom, at least you know that you don't have monthly levies, but recognize that the cost comes back in other ways. And then when we look at an estate, that's sort of a hybrid between the two. You have something that's the almost, you've got something where you have a full title property, but sitting inside a gated community uh, where Depending on the uh, estate, you can maintain all of your own responsibilities and maintenance costs, but understand that you do have some levies that you have to pay that maintain the common property, the roads, the boundary wall, the, the electric fence, and some of the communal stuff that uh, everyone uh, gets to enjoy together. Um, but however, you still get to maintain and have the freedom to change your own home in wh whichever fashion that you would like to do. Uh, but you also have to be aware that you have to still follow the homeowners association and whatever rules that they, they have set down in terms of the, the, the community. 
So if you want to know more, please reach out to us uh, on app uh, at a branch uh, at any one of our telephone contact centers or speak to your private banker.